If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zin. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Boom. And bam. I'm Tony Myers. And I am Zin El Fuego on the mic. This You're on the, the mic. <laughs> this is the Miraculous Gospel of Healing podcast. Holy Brother Tony and myself, we're back in the house. We left you all with some food for thought in the last few episodes. And in this in this series, um, this month in particular, we actually want to touch on some on some topics that we realize that many believers seem to be misconstruing. Right? Holy Brother and I in particular, Holy Brother Tony and I, we've been we have dedicated our lives, basically, I think I can safely speak for him on, 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 on that note, to the name and how we walk this out. And when in walking these things out, the definitions of the scriptures become clearer. All right? One of the things that I, I know that he would definitely agree with when I say no theologian can find the definition of the scriptures just from theory, you do not really understand the definition until you start to really work it out. So we were having a conversation just before we actually started these episodes this um, for this month, the month of June, and we agree that some of the concepts that we may be referring to, some of us, some of our listeners may be hearing what we're saying, but not necessarily have the same mental picture that we have when we say what we say. And so many are actually listening to the definitions or the concepts that they've gotten from the denominational circles or their previous denominational circles. And you'll walk away thinking that you're doing what we said to do, but really, you didn't. <laughs> right? So today, we actually want to start with faith. This is a word that is used probably as much as the word Jesus is used. Profusely. <laughs> Profusely indeed. But the question is, what do you understand faith to be? Is it what we are talking about? And, and Holy Brother Tony was actually saying, and I'm going to give him the opportunity here to, really, to express this again because he really pointed out a very important factor that most, most of us have actually been taught to apply this very abstract perspective to faith. Would you rather un unpack that there for them? So, there are so many basic Christian cultural uses of a word that make it so broad and so as so abstract right. that we think we're walking it out when because we don't have a clear concept of what it is and what does it take in order to have a true um, walking out definition, a definition that is actually cultivating something that is tangible. Well because said, well said. If spirituality is not tangible, it ain't spirituality. Exactly. And that's religion. Mm -hmm. Because in religion, what happens? Religion always pushes everything off to the future. That's so true. Everything is always someday. Now... The same way with faith. I'm going to use an example of heaven. Everybody says they believe in heaven. But that's because it's an abstract thought which in people's minds 
There's no way to prove or disprove in this physical life. And that's where the doctrine could stand. So that's <laughs> the same way that faith is used. And it's in the same abstract sense. So that way now, you no longer have something tangible that shows you what faith is. Right. Religion's done the same thing that's been done with the word heaven to faith. It's so abstract that there's <coughs> no accountability for <coughs> anything tangible to happen. Right. Well, guess what? With David, there's an accountability. And that was Goliath's head cut off. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was a lion killed. That was a bear killed. There was tangible evidence of, I was fixing to say Goliath's faith, of David's faith. <laughs> hey, Jay. We as believers should be cultivating physical evidence. Instead, we, we are using faith as a validation. Why don't you talk about that for a moment, bro? So, one of the things in particular, there's two sides to the script here, as we even speak about validation. Most, and this is something in particular that most believers have actually adopted into their lives without even knowing that they have done it. Simply because, just, just to start with, you were taught that the westernized Christian world in the community of Christians, we are taught a very erroneous perspective of Moses' law. Most of us, and I've said this before, we were just doing our live on Friday and I mentioned this, also, this concept also. Most of us have been taught to approach the Bible through Western judicial law. Which means you have an, a, an understanding that you need to do something to be blessed. You need to do something to be cursed. Whatever you do, there is a transaction taking place. Now, that transaction in particular for you is how you feel satisfied that it is true or it is real you feel approved you feel like a legitimate believer you feel justified that once you have this you're going to get this all right now none of those concepts are, are are inherently evil but they can become evil to you so Moses' law in particular was actually involved two parties. One was Israel, the other God. Most of us approach the scriptures, Moses' law, from the perspective with a, with a mental imagery that does not belong to the scriptures, which is that God is in the sky, and once you do something good, God in the sky will bless you. And once you don't do something that's not right, once you do something that's not right, God in the sky will not bless you. You might we might receive curses. Or the most the, the, um, the favorite of Holy Brother Tony and myself is Satan coming to get you. <laughs> right? <clears throat> that perspective has actually caused many to live from the perspective that they need to do something to be blessed. And as we speak on the topic of healing. You have applied that same erroneous concept to healing, that you need to do something to be healed. You need to do something to satisfy God so that God from heaven will bless you. Now, unfortunately, if you've been doing that, I would, I would safely say some of you may have been doing that for a decade, two decades, three decades, four decades, and you still need healing. Or you still need God to do something. Moses' law was not designed like that. If you have had that thought, I encourage you to just 
give us your attention in this episode here because what we'll do what i'm about to do is to break this down so you can understand what you're really dealing with so that you could actually release yourself from this mental bondage that you've put yourself in using faith which is something supposed to be natural to your spirit you've actually made it a transaction between you and god Moses' law in particular was not blessed and cursed from God in the sky if you did things good or good things did things that were evil. Moses' law was actually a response to the Garden of Eden or man falling outside of the Garden of Eden. The law had two phases. The first phase involved 613 things that the man inside of the Garden would not do. What If you, if you take all of those things that he wouldn't do, would be he would not be inequitable to creation and to other people. Inequitable here meaning whatever God has said, everybody deserves what the blessings that God has actually given everyone. Which means by the law of equity, meaning that what God says is for all, without bias, without separation, each and every one of you, our listeners here deserve to be healed, not because you did something nice or you were a good person yesterday or you didn't curse for the whole week. You have healing because God said the species is supposed to be a healed species. This is on his integrity that you're getting healed. Because man became out of fell outside of the garden, he became inequitable, he became biased. Biased meaning that he he actually made life transactional. He needed to get something to feel normal, to feel legitimate, to feel satisfied, to feel like he has life, to feel like and he's somebody. Way, an, another way to put that is duplicity. Yes, indeed, indeed, because it's always is always an ulterior motive there. Always, one hundred percent. You see things. Either good or evil, or good and evil. Yeah. Right? Now, in, in that context, Moses' law was a response to that, which means this was 613 things dedicated to what the man in the garden wouldn't do, which means he wouldn't be unfair with anything. He wouldn't have biases. And once Israel kept that law, the law upgraded you to become a priest of God. So there was no God in the sky that was waiting to bless you. You were supposed to step up into the priesthood and manifest what God says as God's representative in the earth. Right? When Jesus came, Jesus eliminated the first phase. He took that upon himself. He met the requirements and then nailed those requirements to the cross. Meaning that the only thing left now is the priesthood aspect of the covenant. When we come into Christ, what we do is that we step into the priesthood without necessity to validate ourselves. What's the difference? The difference here is validation means that you are doing something to be approved by God. Whereas the covenant that we are in says that you have been already approved. It is already installed in you. Learn what is in you and put it to use. It is not to be acquired. It is to be expressed. So for instance, we have a vehicle that is already installed, that's already complete, all we have to do, there is a doing part. What we do have to do is get in the vehicle and turn the key. And turn the key. Or even before you turn the key, just spend some time understanding what features you have in your vehicle so that you know what to put on when, when you want what you want. You want music, you know to put on the music. Well, you see, you know to turn on the AC. So faith has already been installed 
within us. Yes. Now, instead of using it as a tool to prove that we are validated, now we simply need to learn how to flow from it. Exactly. So on the one hand, if our listeners just understood the breakdown there, then most believers do not live where you, what you just mentioned. Most of them are having faith because they believe when they have faith, God will be pleased with them and God will then heal them. The covenant, of, the, 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 the covenant does not work like that. The covenant approved you through Jesus' blood. You are approved, which is why you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. If you were not approved, the Holy Spirit, and get this in your brain, eh? the Holy Spirit that caused the death of men that tried to enter into his presence without being purified because of the corruption of spirit, different energy, his life consumed that. You have the Holy Spirit that caused, that caused men to lose their lives, and you're not dead, which means that is very clear proof that you are approved. You are still alive. The Holy Spirit didn't, didn't, didn't slaughter you. Let's take one moment, <laughs> because, because I know a lot of people are not familiar with the tabernacle right. and with, with uh, what the high priest, that whole function, which I don't want, I mean, it would take a long time to really, really break it down. Right, right. <clears throat> but the high priest would enter the yes. holiest of holies. One now, they're, they're, they would have an actual rope tied to their ankles. With a bell. <laughs> <laughs> because if their spirit wasn't right, yeah. guess what? The life Ooh. of that, the life of that power would would actually consume you. And I want to really point that out because of what Zane just mentioned. This is the living proof that we are okay with God, because 100%. we are the holiest of holies and we're alive and breathing. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have yeah. anything else you want to expound on as far as the tabernacle? Well, in, the only thing I'd actually just add to add value to what you just said there is the fact that in the Old Testament, I'll give you three examples of cases where persons who were not right in their spirit entered there and had a problem. Number one is the high priest that you just mentioned. He went in there once a year. He had to purify himself. Now, purification basically means releasing the thought and the logic that reproduces a particular behavior, you're passing that onto an animal and the death of the animal means the death of that thought and logic. That's what it means. Right? He had to cleanse himself to enter there. Once a year, they'll tie this rope, as, you, as Holy Brother Tony said, and a bell. And if you, if the high priest went in there, he went in there for, the, for himself as well as for the nation. If he went in there, <coughs> excuse me, and they had the bell stop moving, they know he has lost his life. And they will pull him out. Because for another priest to go inside it, you would, you would, you would, you would be consumed immediately. The second is the, there was, they were actually, everybody knows the, the story of the, the priest that actually put out his hand to stop the ark from falling from falling and the ark in itself because because the the spirit of god dwelt on the ark they actually referred to the ark as yahweh as well so basically touching the ark is touching yahweh and this priest was not supposed to touch the ark now it is not that god killed him i just want to make that clear we're talking about difference in spirit here a powerful spirit consuming darkness in people right 
And then the third one was a king, King Uz, um, I think it's Uzzah, that went into the temple. And the high priest and 80 priests went behind him. And the high priest told him, it is not for you to be here. And he, he responded with arrogance. While standing in front of the priest, leprosy hit him on his forehead. Now, all of these things actually showed a management system in place because man was not, God wasn't dwelling in man as he was in the garden. Man reversed his function and therefore was not functioning with the mindset of God. And just the mere presence, the presence of the Spirit would actually consume life, will consume you. This same Holy Spirit that caused a pillar of fire manifested a pillar of fire over the Holy of Holies is the same tongues of fire that appeared over the disciples in the upper room showing that, they are, that you are now the temple. Which means if a tongue of fire is upon you, you have the Holy Spirit, it shows that you are basically the ark, you are basically the entire temple. And that validates you 1000% as approved and validated by God to carry the Holy Spirit because Yeshua's blood sanctified you and purchased you for that. That means that there's nothing that you can do to invalidate that. If you have to invalidate that, you are going to have to go back in time and stop Yeshua from going to the cross. <laughs> right? That Holy Spirit is there as proof. And Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 20 to 22, that the Holy Spirit has been given to you to certify you yep. as being owned by God. And you are sealed. Sealed. As in, so not only are you sanctified, but there's a seal around you. Around you of spirit. The sanctification doesn't go away. It does not go away. So what we need to do is that when you're approaching healing, you need to stop applying faith as though you're trying to earn that. Because that system of trying to earn it there is no God in the heaven, as you were taught, that is going to drop the blessing from the sky. The covenant makes you the priest and the presence of God so that you, in God, are supposed to manifest that. You have the responsibility in the person of God to do that. The healing comes from within. And when you're healed, if you are sensitive to it, you know it's coming from within. Yeah. You know it's not coming from the outside. It is coming from within. It's deep never within the outside. in your spirit. It's a multiplication of spirit coming out. And Holy Brother Tony just mentioned something. He said, the faith is installed in you. Let me, let me just share this one point here, Holy Brother. One of the things, one of the side effects of treating faith as though it's something that you're trying to validate yourself with before God is treating faith as, as though that's something that you do. The garden law says every spirit reproduces after his own kind. Therefore, if you are told to walk in faith, that means that you have to be the person of faith to express faith. And if you're the person of faith, then Give thought to this. Your very thoughts are faith in motion. It's not something that you do to get. Your very thoughts are faith in motion. What, what we're basically speaking about here is really identifying rem the removal of the validation and understand that you exist as faith. And what you need to do is to discipline your thoughts to truth. So it's something that you apply. Now, we can do episodes where we can actually give you our, our examples of how we do that. But in this episode in particular, we need to make it very clear that this has nothing to do with doing, with actually faith, moving as though, doing, uh, sorry, applying faith as though you feel you're getting points for that. 
Because many believers, holy brother Tony can say the same thing, and I can say the same thing. Many believers approach us and they swear on their Bible that they're in faith. They swear on the Bible. And you're not even swearing on the Bible in, in genuine honesty. You're swearing on the Bible because you believe that if you if if it is heard that you're not in faith, God will be displeased with you. And so you don't want God to hear that you're not in faith because you believe it, He wouldn't bless you from the skies. But that model is totally erroneous. Let me use this statement that people would use. And this is a sign that you're using faith as validation. Why hasn't God healed me? You start, you start by there already. <laughs> right there. You're using faith as a validation. Contradicting yourself. Faith. Let's put it like this. If you are not seeing a result, then faith is a validation and that's how you're using it. David had a result of his faith because Goliath's head was separated from his body. He didn't require validation. So that is that is one thing right there is to put on the right mindset that God validated you already. The fact that you are alive and breathing with the Spirit of God within you, you are sealed of the Holy Spirit. Now, <clears throat> there, there is an action on my part because I am already validated That action is not to get validation. Right. So I do, I will do an action because I am healed, not <sighs> trying to get healed. Right. And so we need to start wrapping this one up. Let's get some wise words to sum it all up of this episode because we're going to build off into the next episode and we're going to talk about believing. Well, let's, let's put this in a way that sh should jolt the minds of our listeners. Do you know that there's a difference between good works and evil works in the New Testament? Evil works is doing things for validation. The writer of Hebrews chapter 6 says that you're supposed, in Christ, we're supposed to repent from evil works. Good works is actually functioning from validation, which means because you are sealed with the Spirit, your very thoughts are spirit-charged. And so you have no reason to actually think that it will not manifest. There, should, there is no reason. You, you literally have no reason because Jesus removed all the reasons. If you're saying in this song, if God doesn't move the man, I still have faith in him, then you have the wrong aspect. Because it is impossible for God to have made you power because your father is called power. Jesus said, you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. If God is your Father, then power is your Father. And by reproduction after your own kind, you are power. Then you need to revisit even singing that song. We leave that for your gears to grind on.
Right, so holy brother, hit them the blessing there on the way out. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. We'll catch you in the next episode. And get up, do something. Be healed. <laughs> <laughs>